Um, so I thought I'd give you a quick update that Keith was kind enough to write for me on the uh, Falcon controllers and, and what's going on there. So as some of you may know, the F16 V3 has been released and it has a, a lot more features than the V2 or even perhaps some of the other controllers on the market today. Um, first up, it can put up to 1,024 pixels per port out each output, which is handy, but personally I probably wouldn't put that many pixels on one port because failure of one pixel will take out all the rest on that port. Um, it also has an Ethernet switch built in with one port on it so that you can daisy chain um, another controller from the F16 V3 rather than, you know, if you've got two controllers in one box, you can just run one network lead to it and plug the other one in. Um, it has um, a screen like the other ones uh, and it has a fan connector if you want to try and have a fan in your box that um, uh, responds to the temperature levels and automatically starts and so on. It also has a bunch of um, features that are slated to come soon. So one of those being um, Wi-Fi um, access. Now, not so much for pushing your pixel data across the Wi-Fi, but for accessing it over Wi-Fi to configure your controller, or if you want to make it a slave off of an FPP, which Keith is going to talk about next, for sending the sync packets. Um, and also some other things. Um, uh, USB or header output so that you can play sound out the F16 V3. That would be where you would um, store your sequences on the F16 V3. Say if you had a, a show that only had one controller, the idea is you put your sequences on that controller, you play the audio out of that, and you play your pixels out of that. Um, but the software development for those features is still ongoing. So um, released shortly after the F16 V3 was the F4 V3 which is very similar. It has a lot less pixel outputs and it only has one DMX output, um, but most of the other features are the same. Um, no one in Australia has an F4 V3 at this point in time, um, but someone may choose to import one and that's the replacement for the F4 V2, which um, there were a couple of mini prizes of those last year. So with the F16 V3s, you can connect up to two expansion boards. And there are a couple of different um, expansion boards. The one shown there on the screen is to give you an extra 16 string outputs. When you attach expansion boards to the Falcon controllers, they don't necessarily increase the number of pixels you can drive in total, but they give you more flexibility in having more outputs so that you can either limit your failure modes by splitting your, your strings across multiple outputs or to make um, power a bit easier. You know, every time you add an expansion board, you double the power capacity of the main board. So you could um, try and avoid um, power injection as much, for instance, by having shorter strings that each plug into a port, seeing you've got so many ports. There are some, um, there are some limitations around what you can do in terms of the old expansion boards. Um, I won't go into exactly that. Um, and when you're running expansion boards on the F16 V3, with the V2, um, for instance, on the main board you could have 680 pixels per port. But as soon as you connect it to an expansion board, both the expansion board and the main board halved, so you can only have 340. With the V3, you still only have 1,024 per port across your main board, your expansion, and your second expansion, but you get to control the ratio. So you can say, oh, on my main board I've got a tree, and my tree only has 100, 100 pixels on each output. So I'll set the main board to have 100 pixels on each output, and then that would leave you another 924 pixels to say, I want, some of the, I want like 600 of them on my first distribution board and 324 of them on my second distribution board. So it gives you a bit more flexibility in how you split up the um, channel counts on the various boards. Um, the gotcha with that is that if you want to set up that split, you've got to say that it's the same for every port on the boards. You can't say port 1 has 100 pixels, port 2 has 200 pixels, and so on. You've got to set them all to be the same. Of course, what you plug into that, you can always plug in less than the maximum number of pixels. So the differential expansion board um, gives you the advantage 
of basically getting some more distance between your props and your controller. So um, a lot of people have used null pixels in the past because they had problems with the length between their first pixel and their controller. The Falcons are pretty good. I can get easily get 10 meters between my first pixel and my controller in general. But if you want to go, say, 150 meters, then you're never going to get pixel data that whole way without having some sort of, well, probably without having a null pixel every five meters or something, which is just insane. So what the differential expansion board lets you do, it lets you um, plug in these little four port receivers and connect them back um, from up to 300 meters away back to your controller over normal network cable. And then you can supply some power to the little receiver board and have four outputs wherever you need them in your show. So it can be, and you can connect four lots of these into each expansion board. So it can be quite a flexible way of, if you've got lots of elements spread across a large yard, of getting the data out to them with um, less hassle. And of course it says 75 meters on this presentation. I thought it was 300 meters. Yeah. So I'm probably to troll. <laughs> so that's a picture of the differential receiver board that you plug into the differential expansion board. The other thing that you can do with these um, differential receiver boards, if you're not using any DMX on your F16 V2 or your F16 V3, you can actually plug one of these into the first DMX port and get four strings remote from your main controller. And it's a fairly low cost way of doing it because if you don't have any DMX stuff then those ports are just sitting there empty. So for 17 US dollars you can get one of these differential receiver boards, um, plug it in and get four more outputs effectively. So there's a note down the bottom. There's a new differential receiver board being developed, um, which the idea is then you could daisy chain a new type of receiver board off of each other to give you even more flexibility across your yard. You know, say you, you, know, you had a tree here that needs an output and a tree over here that needs an output, you could start to chain these boards together to, rather than running pixel data between the, chain, between the trees, you can run um, a network cable and, and put another little board in there. Um, but I haven't seen the specs of exactly what that's going to do, so that will be, a, be interesting to see. Um, so a couple of the other Falcon products that are, that are mentioned on here. Um, a number of ACL members make power distribution boards, um, but they only typically put the positive, they only typically do positive power distributions for a fuse, and then you've got to get like a bus bar or something to, to handle the negatives or the grounds. Um, Dave made one that does both the positive and the negatives, and also with socketed um, plugs, so it can make it a bit easier if you're doing lots of power distribution to use something like that for your fusing. And then um, a number of people, including Alec back here, make um, uh, little capes that you can, oh, capes isn't the word, hats I guess is what, or caps is what we're calling them, um, that you can put on your Raspberry Pi to hook some pixels straight up to your Raspberry Pi. Um, Alec calls his the Pixel Pie. Um, the Falcon one's called a Pie Cap, and I think um, uh, someone else makes a Pie Hat, and so on. And they all do similar sorts of things. They do some pixel strings, and then they might have some um, fancy stuff on them, like a real-time clock, so that your Pie can keep the time when it's turned off, or a DMX output, or maybe um, even a a pixel output capable of driving um, four wire strings like a 2801 or, or something like that. Um, and then in development, another note on the bottom, they're looking to develop a little um, wireless, um, they call them a pixel stick, but a little, little wireless circuit board that you can put an SD card in and then store your sequence on that and use it as a slave to FPP. Um, and that was about it for this pack. Um, I have a, um, the older style um, differential expansion. Can I plug that into the newer Falcon expansion board? Yes and no. <laughs> the, the answer, I believe, at this point in time is you can't. However, you can, 
if you remove one of the pins off of it, off of its 40 pin header. Um, and I believe a document will be published in the future to demonstrate what pin that needs to be. The longer answer is to enable the use of the second expansion board on the F16 V3, one additional pin was needed to drive that. And there were no pins available, so they had to steal one of the ground pins. And so if you plug it straight in today, um, you'll be shorting one of the pins on the processor to ground, which probably works, probably won't harm the processor, but let's not do it. <laughs> not covered by warranty, if there is warranty. <laughs> I said if, I said if. <laughs> All right. Great.